I've got three numbers for you, Brady, and I want you to tell me what they've got in common. 2025, which is the year, of course. 666, which is very scary. And 1729, which you probably recognise as a... Taxi cab. Taxi cab number, exactly. But what have these all got in common? They're harsh head numbers. <laughs> oh, come on, Brady, that's <laughs> annoying. What's that mean? That's the title of the video, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They bring joy. These are these are numbers that bring joy. And that is, of course, a, a Harshad number. Harshad means a joy giver. And these are all examples of, uh, of Harshad numbers. I'll show you why they, they are Harshad numbers. So, so let's take the first one, 2025. If I divide it by the sum of its uh, digits, so 2 plus 0 plus 2 plus 5, I get 225, which is a whole number. So that's 2,025 divided by 9. So now I could do it with 666. Okay, divide by the... The sum of the digits, which is obviously going to be 18, that's going to give me 37, another whole number. And I could do it as well for, for 1729 as well. Any number which is divisible by the sum of its digits is what we call a Harshad number. So Harshad isn't named after a mathematician called Harshad or something like that? No, it's Sanskrit for, for the word joy giver. So it was, it, they were introduced originally by Capricar, who we've come across before. They were also raised into some prominence by a mathematician by the name of Ivan Niven in the 70s, so somewhat after Capricar. Think about various numbers, pick a number, ask if it's harsh. So I thought maybe we could think about birthdays. So I looked up your birthday, Brady. Am I allowed to talk about your birthday? Yes. It's on Wikipedia anyway, so, so, so it's no. So do you think your birthday is that? Is so if I write down your birthday, I'm going to write it down now. Okay, getting on a bit there, lad, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Big 5-0 this year. <laughs> oh, no, next year, next year, what we're we talking about. Yeah, big 5-0 coming up, 1976. Okay, it, do you think this number is harsh, Ed? I don't think you would have gone for the trouble of bringing it up if it wasn't. Well, I can check. It's, so you're all excited now, aren't you? You're all excited. Well, it's not going to be harsh, Ed, okay? I know, it's just, but we'll, we'll come back to that later. Uh, we divide by the sum of its digits, okay? So I need to divide that big number by 38. I mean, we could check it with the American system as well, by the way. Yeah, so that comes out at... So it's just it's rubbish. Brady, your birthday's rubbish. Yeah, so one of the things you can ask is, what kind of numbers are going to be harsh ad, for example? Well, factorials are commonly harsh ad, as you can imagine. Why? Because they've got a lot of factors, right? You know, a factorial is you just you do one times two times three times four and so on, right? But not all factorials are harsh ad, as it turns out. 432 factorial is not a Harshad number, somewhat surprisingly. It's the first factorial that's not Harshad. So it's not guaranteed that you're Harshad if you're factorials, but factorials are, are, are often Harshad. Every single digit number is kind of obviously Harshad, because it, obviously you just divide it by itself and you, you get one. How many of them do you think there are? How, how many Harshad numbers do you think we have? I'm going to guess that it, there are an infinite number of them. Th there are an infinite number, that's true. Uh, they do get, the density of them does go down over, as you get to larger and larger values, so you get fewer and fewer, but it is true that there are an infinite number. One thing we can ask about as well is whether we can get blocks of Harshad numbers. So for example, do you get like Harshad pairs? So it's two, two consecutive numbers which, which are Harshad. And, and you do, for example... Uh, the All number. the single digits. Yeah, I'll be, okay, well, let's go, let's just jump away. Yeah, of course, very good, Brady. <laughs> yeah, but even beyond that, right? Yeah. So, so, for example, 20 and 21, both these are, are Harshad numbers. And that's actually the smallest sort of you know, non-trivial Harshad pair. You can have Harshad triples. Uh, the smallest one of those uh, is 110, 111, and 112. You get Harshad quadruples. And you can carry on and ask, do you get these blocks? There's a block of 17. The smallest block of 17 is known. Brady's going to put it on the screen now. So then you can ask about, what about blocks of 18? They exist, but we don't know where the smallest one is. Blocks of 19, they also exist, but we don't know where the smallest one is. Blocks of 20 exist. Don't know what the smallest one is. Blocks of 21? None. There's no blocks of 21. Proven. Proven. No blocks of 21 harsh ad numbers. So this is 100% this is known. You can never get a block of 21. The block of 20 that hasn't been found, the smallest hasn't been found, does it definitely exist? Yes. It does, right? It does exist, yes. So the blocks of 20 exist. 
Blocks of 21 do not exist. Infinite number of blocks of 20? Oh, good question. Uh, I don't know the answer to that off the top of my head. I'm going to say... I, I want to say yes. I reckon, uh, I reckon yes. I, re I reckon yes. I mean, we know that the actual the harsh numbers themselves, there's, a, you know, there's an infinite number, albeit they get much less dense. I mean, the density does drop, but I can't imagine it it's sufficiently a big effect to eliminate the blocks. But I don't want to say that. I don't know for sure. Okay, I'm going to be honest there. I don't know. Another place that you can sort of often find them, they tend to cluster around, the number, around multiples of nine. That's another weird thing about it. I can show you a little plot of that that I've prepared. So here's a plot of the density of the Harshad numbers, okay? So it sort of gives you a rough estimate of the local density, and yeah, that's what the, the vertical axis is, and as we go along the sort of number line, the red dots show multiples of, of nine. And what you can see here is that most, there's not actually that many where the density is very low. Around a, multiples of nine, the density doesn't tend to be low, it tends to be sort of amongst the higher ones. And it's because, it's simple, there's a, there's a nice fact that if you take any number, then it is equal to the sum of its digits mod nine. So let me show you exactly. We'll do an example, for example. Should I get another piece of paper or should I? You can get it if you want. Okay, so let's take our 1729, our, our taxi card number. That is 192 times 9 plus 1. So modulo 9, this is just 1. If I look at the sum of its digits, that's 19, which is 2 times 9 plus 1. Okay, so this is also 1. Mod 9. And it's true of any number. Any number is equal to the sum of its digits, mod 9. And so this is the reason why you often get harsh end numbers clustering around 9, because it links the number to the sum of its digits in quite a natural way, you see. Obviously, we're talking base 10 here. This is, this is a point where this becomes very evident. Yes, that's true. And uh, we are going to come back to different bases in a minute. But I want to do, show you something else about, about harsh end numbers. You can have harsh end chains. Okay, so this is like where you get multiple harsh end numbers. So I'll give you an example. 6804. If I take the sum of its digits, I get 18, and that's going to give me 378. So this, this is a harsh end number. But now I can look at this guy that I've sort of got from it, right? And I can ask, is this a harsh end number? Well, 378, if I divide by the sum of its digits, that's also 18. That gives me 21. Okay, so I've got another harsh end number. Okay, this is a harsh ad number. What about 21? Well, 21 divided by the sum of its digits, that's 3. Okay, oh, there you go, another whole number. So this must mean 21 is a harsh ad number. What about 7? That's definitely a harsh ad number. Okay, and I get down to 1. So from this original seed, I, you know, I've, I've gone through a chain of, um, of sort of 1, 2, 3, 4 non-trivial harsh ad numbers. Okay, at plus one if you want, you know, counting the one there. So this is called like a multiple harsh ad number of, of, of length four. And you can obviously have longer uh, chains of harsh ad numbers. Here's a pretty cool one. 2016502858. Six, six, one, seven, six. This bad boy, right? This guy, and I'm not gonna do it, but you can try it at home. This will give you a chain of 12 harsh end numbers. That's pretty impressive. You can have infinitely long chains in principle. So this number times 10 to the n, this guy is guaranteed to have be a chain of length n plus 2. So it's an example. So that just shows as long as I can just make it bigger and bigger and bigger, I can get chains of any length. Other bases, Brady, you wanted to do other bases, right? Yep. Okay. Obviously, you can think about harsh ad numbers in different bases. Same uh, sort of idea, basically. Spread the joy. Spread the joy. Let's spread the joy. So let's think about your birthday again. Okay. Let's do it. All right. Should we see if it's a harsh ad in, uh, in, in a different base? So Are even or odd numbers more likely to be harsh ad? Oh, good question. Well, we know that. So even is obviously good because it means you guarantee that two is a fact. You know, mm -hmm. You're going to divide. So I think even. I'm going to. I don't know this, but I'm going to claim even is. More yeah, because you're less likely to hit a prime. Exactly. And... Exactly. Okay, we're going to do your birthday again, Brady. So my little Python code, which I'm very proud of. Okay, let's see what it tells us. So it says it's a harsh ad number in base 16 and in base 20. I've only gone up to 21. I can go higher if you want. Do you want to see if you've got any other ones? Okay, go let's higher. Let's do it, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Oh, there we go, it's done it. Oh, there's loads. So I guess the question popping into my head now is, 
other numbers that are harsh ad numbers in lots of bases? Like, is there a special property? Are you talking about your, your universal joy givers? Your sort of, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. most joyful of numbers. The most joyful of, yes, there are, Brady. There are numbers which are universally joyful, which are harsh ad in every base. They're not very many, but they do exist. I guess you can only go up to the number itself in base, can't you? Exactly, it? Yeah. exactly. Yeah. They are, there are four of them. Yeah. Numbers one, numbers two, numbers four, and number six. Those are what's called trans harshad. They are harshad in every base. Okay, come what may. So they are indeed universal joy givers. Here's a funny one, the number 12. It's, it's weird, it's almost trans harshad. It almost wants to give joy to every single uh, number, except for base A. It does not like base A. So it's harshad in every base, except for base A. Do they bring you joy? They do bring me joy, but especially when I start thinking about these cool facts. Actually. This, this, this one I think is, is, is a crazy fact, right? So, and it's proven. So take any number under a billion, right? Any number under a billion, then that number is guaranteed to be either Harshad or the sum of two Harshads. Just two, right? Any number under a billion is either Harshad or the sum of two Harshads, which I think is wild. Does it fail after a billion or has it just not been tested past a billion? It will fail eventually after a billion, I think, because I'm going to tell you the next bit. Every single number, literally every number, every positive integer, it doesn't matter how big it is, is going to be the sum of at most, let's say, k harsh ad numbers, where k is some finite number, right? This is proven. k is some finite number, but k is not known. Right. Okay. So it could be three? It could be three. It could be, well, it probably isn't three, but it, it, it could be tree three. But it's, it's a wild fact. Any number is the sum of the most k harsh numbers, where k is some finite number, currently unknown. So this, this is a proven fact. This is, this, is, this, is just, this is just true. And the proof of it relies on, I think, some related to Dedekind zeta functions and all this sort of stuff, right? Is the number likely to be what you and I would consider a big number? Or could it be like, you know, seven or something? I reckon it's probably quite a big number. Yeah, I don't think it's seven. I think it's probably bigger. Right. I don't think it's necessarily tree three. I, I don't know. Because we're dealing with something which goes arbitrarily Forever. high. Forever. So, yeah. So, yeah, I'm not sure. Now no, no, I'm not sure. No, maybe it is big. It's uh, interesting. I'd love to know. I mean, it's not known. I mean, the answer is, is, is currently unknown, right? So, so this is important. Yeah. And we, we haven't stopped. There's more to know. So there are super harsh ad numbers. Okay, so these are harsh ad numbers where when you divide them by the sums of their digits, you get a prime number. All right, these are called super harsh ad, sometimes called Moran numbers. So this is a 18, for example, is super harsh ad because if I divide by some of its digits, which is 9, I get 2, which is obviously a prime number. So this is an example of something that's super harsh ad. There's also something called harsh ad morphic numbers. It's probably best illustrated with, again, an example. So if I take the, the number 16,218, this is a harsh ad number. You'll notice that it ends in 18. If I take the sum of its digits, what do I get? I'll get 18. Okay, so this makes 18 harsh ad morphic. So it's something where there is a harsh ad number which ends in the number you're interested in and for which the sum is the number you're interested in. That's, that's called a harsh ad morphic number. I'll give you another example. That seems trivial even by our standards, but... Well, I'm, wait, I'm there's, missing... there's something about it. So I'll give you another example just so, so we're clear what it is. So, so if I take the harsh ad number 2715, okay, ends in 15, okay, the sum of these guys is, of course, also 15, right? So that makes 15. Harsh ad morphic. Right, now I'm going to ask you a question. How many numbers do you think are harsh ad morphic? <laughs> well, you've set me up now. It's either infinite or some ridiculously low number that's going to surprise me. Do you, do you think there are any numbers that aren't? Or any numbers that, how many are? I mean, we know that 18 is, we know that 15 is. Oh, you mean what number can make the morphy part? Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh... Yeah, so what, what are we calling that part? The, this, is, this is called the harsh, these are the, the, you would say that 18 is harsh ad morphic and, and 15 is harsh ad morphic. Okay. If there's a harsh ad number which ends in it and who has it as okay. some digits. Okay, so are there some numbers that aren't accounted for? Yeah, or, or, or is every number one? Or is it just a subset of them? What do you reckon? I feel like, I feel like every number should be one. 
eventually in an infinite world of harsh elements. So there are not, there is not, no, it's not every number. There's one number and only one number which is not harsh and morphic. And that is in base 10 I'm talking about here. Right. Okay. Oh, please let it be something really arbitrary like, you know, 209 or something. <laughs> what is it? It's 11. 11? 11. 11 is the only number which is not, which is not a harsh and morphic. I, I, think, I think it's related to the fact it's base 10 and it's one more than base 10, basically. It's, it's connected to that fact. That's it. I mean, I don't know. If got, I mean, I think they bring in, they brought me some joy at least. Do you have a head for numbers or would you like a head for numbers? Why not train your brain on the magnificent bounty of courses and lessons available on Brilliant? There's no better way to learn than to flex those neurons than this kind of visual interactive content. It's designed by smart people who care about learning. It has personality. I also love the clean style and design too. Look, you never know where your career or life might be going next, and the knowledge and skills you'll pick up on Brilliant could be invaluable. To learn for free, go to brilliant.org slash number file or scan that QR code there on screen or click on the links below. Brilliant's also giving our viewers 20% off an annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to everything on the site. Our thanks to them for supporting this episode of Number File. Is there a point to this? This this does seem highly recreational, or is there something deeper lurking here? I mean, it is it is pretty recreational, I think. I mean, it, so the root of them was recreation, right? This Caprica, that was his thing. He, he did recreational mathematics. Okay, here's where I, I would say there's, there's, there's some interest. 